what's going on guys um got a new financial model here for preferred equity and i've already done a couple i've done preferred equity and a preferred return i've also done some irr hurdle stuff um but this is a little bit of a different style um build it's preferred equity but it's a soft version because you're not returning all of the initial um preferred equity before anybody gets any cash so let's just walk through this um it's actually pretty simple um so what the model will allow you to do is you've got three tiers tier one is the limited partner which is just the investors um get paid 80 percent of, of available cash flow while the general partner um, which is usually the owners and operators get 20 percent and this split exists on all cash flow until the initial equity amount from the investors is paid. Once that's been repaid, um, tier two splits it in a different percentage, which you can define all these percentages. I just put 80-20. Here we've got 50-50. So this is saying now after this um, equity is repaid, we'll split all cash 50-50 until the investor receives a 1.65 multiple, which would mean if you invested a dollar, it means you've been to return a total of a dollar sixty-five, or a million dollars. It means you've got a million six hundred fifty thousand back. Um, once that's been reached, it goes to the third and final tier, which is then a split, um, a new percentage split, which can be defined. And usually, you know, after after this is um, hurdles beat, the limited partner is going to get less of a share than the general partner because you know they've they're taking less risk because they're getting more of the cash flows early on and then once they get their money back in a defined return here um, they're now getting less and it's just a risk thing you can structure the percentages however you want um, it just allows for some more sophisticated deal making with investors uh, and they might like the risk better this way too it's just gives you a lot more options um, and this is a bit easier to understand and a bit more clear compared to doing internal rate of return uh, waterfall hurdles. So I figured it'd be a good option to do here. Uh, now, all you have to do is adjust these percentages and everything updates. There's a lot of logic here in between that I've hidden. If I unhide it, you can see all of this is required to make all of this dynamic so it knows, you know, when the equity has been repaid, when this multiple has been reached, and um, afterwards so it knows what cash should actually be split and it's not super easy to build this um, a lot of circular reference errors you got to look out for so to make this work right it was not easy but I think it's super useful um, so once you put this in at the top all you do is fill in the distributable cash flows right up top here for each year and then the equity the limited partner is putting in in year zero now if the limited partner puts more money in in the future you would just all put that into your zero equity contributions because the main basis of this model is how much did they contribute and when is it paid back and by how much so you can put all those into year zero the only difference of doing that is you're going to get a little bit of a lower internal rate of return than if you were to put those negative cash flows out into the future but most models you've got all the equity is is contributed up front anyway so it works and this can be used for real estate or any startup business general business deal uh, not just real estate even though you often see this stuff happening in real estate um, it doesn't have to be real estate so let's look at the logic here year one we've got 300,000 coming in we're saying it's split 80-20 until this 1.5 million is paid back. So you can see limited partner in tier one is getting 80%, so 240. Uh, general partner is getting 20%, 60,000. So there's all the cash available. It's all going into tier one. And you can see year two, same deal, same deal for year three. Now year four, and I just put a arbitrary cash amount in here, but year four, we're going over the now we've seen this 80% of the, the cash flows is reached 1.5 million. So now only partial of this 2 million is split 80 20. And up to, you can see here if we add up all the limited partner cash, it's 1.5 million. 
um, is split 80-20. Now the remaining amount, you've got a million twenty-five left for year four, is split 50-50 up to 1.65 multiple. So you can see here we've not reached 1.65 yet. So all of this is going to be split 50-50 cash flows. So you can see the remaining cash flows are going 50-50. And we're still looking at how much the investor has gotten or the limited partners. And we're tracking that multiple here. And you can see this will stop as soon as we hit 1.65. And you could change this. Let's say we wanted to be 1.85. Now you're splitting cash 50-50 for longer until you hit 1.85. Or if we put 1.25, it's all hit actually and the rest of that million and then we actually move to the third tier, which is 2080 to the in favor of the general partner. And we split that um, into perpetuity. So you can see how useful it is to have all this working dynamically. And you just place the numbers up top here. Um, and then again, these don't have to be, these could be whatever percentages you want. Let's say it's 65, 35. And then based on whatever cash flows happen here, everything auto updates. And you can see here's a waterfall one or tier one. Then it's like a waterfall it flows to tier two. And then when that's filled up, we go to tier three. And then once we add up all the cash flows for each tier, we can get a total amount of cash distributed for the to the limited partner and the general partner right here. And this obviously can never equal more than the total cash available. So 5.4 million. You see this equals 5.4 million. And we've got a check in there to make sure. So this checks the balances. Uh, and then finally here you can put if the general partner is putting in any money or any equity, they can put a, a negative amount here to represent that in case you want to show the... Um, internal rate of return for the general par general partners as well as their equity multiple which will show on the final summary so i'm really excited about this logic i think it's one of the simplest things to explain to an investor they really understand okay it's 80 20 till i get my equity back then it's 50 50 until i get a certain multiple and then after I've, whatever multiple that is has been attained it's a new percentage split after that and it's all set up, all the like the partial amounts that go, like some of it's in one tier, some of it's in the other. That's all dynamic. It works um, for any numbers you want to put up here. So we have a final summary that just shows your internal rate of return. Here's the cash flows um, out and in over time. Internal rate of return of the LP and GP. Uh, they're running cash position, so this kind of shows when they've actually made back what they put in. Uh, and then their final equity multiple after everything is considered. Then we've got uh, discounted cash flow analysis, which is just taking the present value of all these future cash flows going to each group, discounting it back to the present with, uh, with a discount rate. And then you get a net present value by removing the initial equity investment from that present value. Uh, now, to check this, it's really simple. You just take the internal rate of return, which is equal to the, it makes the present value of the future cash flow zero. So if you copy and paste this into here, the net present value should go to zero. You can see it does, so that means there's no errors in the logic. Uh, then we have the visual, which just shows the cash coming out and in for the limited partner and general partner. So this is a really nice, easy way you can see, look at before. The, general, the limited partner gets their money back, they're getting way more of the cash that's available. Well, they're putting up more, but they're getting more, way more back. And then once they get it back, you can see here's the 50-50. And then once they've gotten the defined multiple, here's the, the lower um, split for the LP afterwards. Now, why would a limited partner do this? Well, number one, they want to encourage the, the sponsor or um, operator to get the cash back to the investors as fast as possible so that's and then after they do that they start to earn more based on these hurdles and the percentages that's also good for the investor because it's less risky you're getting more cash back sooner 
um, and that's why you might be willing to cap your upside in the future for more money back sooner of what's, whatever is available. All right, that's all I got for you. This will be a, um, I'm going to probably put this up as an upper tier model because uh, I think it's going to have a lot of interest and I think it's super valuable and the logic is uh, one of the more complex uh, setups that I had to do. Um, it'll be available at smarthelping.com as well as Eloquent and eFinancial Models. And that's it. I'll see you on the next one.